was good, was good. So, <laughs> y'all know I went in the bathroom just a second ago to sponge my hair before sitting down to record this like I was going to be seen. <laughs> I'm superficial as fuck. It's cool, though. Check it out. It's the Got the Draws Chronicles with Mike Chuck 1212. Um, and I know what that sounds like, but it ain't that. Um, this uh, is it is a chronicle, if you will. Um, it, I will be uh, discussing um, the various uh, bodies, if you will, on my body count. Um, but I'm not going to discuss them in the way you think. I'm going to discuss them. I'm not going to sit here and just, you know, glorify it like, ah, I done fucked a whole bunch of bitches. Um, it's not going to be that sort of thing. Um, it's a little bit different. Um, and I really wanted to work my way up to the first person that I'm going to discuss. But um, I'm at a point in my life where I feel like, I don't know, I feel like I owe it to this person and I owe it to myself to to talk about it to kind of get it off my chest um leave you know leave room for others to criticize me if they will and whatever what have you um but I think it's that time I think I think other people need to hear it now I think other people need to hear this situation and this this episode and the contents of it are not just for me and for those that would like to criticize it's not just for uh, the person who I'm talking about It's also for Those those fellas in relationships right now Those fellas in relationships and, and, and married Or even seeing somebody that they feel like Is really really important um, It's for them I want them to hear this too uh, it, This this episode is really Really closely relative to uh, That Jay Z quote uh, From the 444 album on the song, the song is called "Family Ties," I believe, where he starts off his final verse by saying, "I'll fuck up a good thing if you let me, let me alone, Becky." Um, and he goes to say, "A man who don't take care of his family can't be rich." But I want to focus on the part that says, "I'll fuck up a good thing if you let me." That, in particular, is what this episode is about. Um, not even so much being allowed to fuck up a good thing, but just just recklessly fucking up. Not even a good thing, but probably the best thing, um, at least to this point, uh, that's ever happened to me. Completely, completely screwed the fucking pooch on it. And it's just crazy to even think that a person like me, you know what I'm saying? Like I'm I'm probably I won't say probably. I'm I'm a very intelligent dude. Um and you know, people that know me know that. I'm I'm very, very smart. Uh but as smart as I am, I was still fucking dumb enough to do the thing that I did to this woman. And it's it's fucking ridiculous. But it's going to make for a good story, so listen up. Now, real quick, before I dive right into the story, I do want to make sure you guys understand that there is another female involved in this situation um, <coughs> who, I mean, honestly, like, she didn't even, like, she doesn't even know anything about this, um, and that's the sad part. Like, the other girl that's involved in this situation uh, doesn't even know about this situation that I'm about to tell you guys about. And like I said, there, there's there's two women involved. Um, but let me just let me just get to it. So this is 2016, um, probably shortly after um, my 34th birthday. Uh, we had just recently had a, a huge kickback. At me and my roommate's apartment at the time in my mail, and um, <clears throat> huge success. It was a great party, um, but <clears throat> I wasn't really seeing anybody at that time that I liked. Um, I was just out of uh, a really, really serious long relationship. Well, I won't say long, but 
uh, it was long enough. It, it, it was about two and a half years. We were coming on three years, and we had broke up February of that year. Um, and, you know, that was pretty much that. Um, <clears throat> I was at work one day. And I'm sure most of you guys know where I work. Uh, I work in North Little Rock, Arkansas. Um, and I work at a retail store. <clears throat> Excuse me. Every day when I'm at work, you know, we have big windows. We can see right outside of the windows. And every day when I'm at work, there is this woman that walks by. And, you know, she's kind of focused on what she's doing. You know, she's got kind of got a, um, a like standoffish sort of disposition towards, you know, anybody that comes out to speak to her or anything like that, which I'll be honest with you, I'm attracted to that. You know what I'm saying? I like that. My mom is like that. I really like women like that, that like don't want nobody to talk to them like that for real. I like that a lot. Well, I keep seeing her. You know what I'm saying? You know, every, every two or three days a week, you know what I'm saying? I, I see her. And it's like, man, like, I'm, I'm really, I think she's crazy attractive. And although she has this sort of disposition towards people, she still has this look on her face that says to me at least that she is probably a good person. I can't explain how I can look at that and see that, but that's just how I felt, you know? Um, so, you know, one day I'm, you know, I'm at the time I got, you know, there's a few, quite a few guys in the store. Um, and as body counts go, I've had a great year after I broke up with my ex, you know, I, I've had a really good year, a really good summer. And I'm, you know, I'm kind of on a high. These guys kind of revered me at this point. And, but it doesn't change the fact that I really, really want this girl that I keep seeing and I stopped out and talked to her um I stepped out and I, I stopped her one day and um I can't I can't really explain to you guys what I said to her um but I'm not um I mean I'm good with words um and I it wasn't like I was running game or anything like that because like I'm like I was explaining to you guys, I really, really did want that girl. Like it wasn't no, it, it wasn't a sexual attraction that I saw in her. Like, like you you can tell the difference between what's serious and what's not. And this to me, initially, just from what I could see, seemed to be like, yo, I'm gonna take this seriously. And the crazy thing about this is, like, a part of me, a big part of me, knew like right at that moment that. This could be, this could mean the rest of my life right here. That's what this situation could mean. Like this could the good end. You know what I mean? Like like you writing a book and this the, this is this is the the sixth chapter and we're gonna be able to finish this book on this high. You know what I'm saying with this 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 perfect duo basically. You know what I'm saying and that's I could feel that. I could sense that in a major way. You know what I'm saying? But I'm a fucking idiot. But anyway, <laughs> so I remember she insisted that she take my number. She did not give me. She would not give me her number. Like no go. She was. I think you know she was at a point where she had been spurned quite a few times by dudes, um, and she was really kind of on. Uh, on the fence about you know even even dealing with a dude at this capacity you know what I'm saying like just just getting to know a dude you know what I'm saying was something that she was she was against at this time you know she had been done wrong so many times up to now that you know she didn't want to go through it again which you know a lot of women a lot of single women out there you know what I'm saying even today still that's that's their story you know what I'm saying it's been so much heartbreak and uh, so many times being done wrong and so many times being spurned that they don't even want to they don't even want to deal with a nigga you know what I'm saying not even get to know a nigga just to be friends they don't even want that situation on them you know and that's the point where she was at um but she took my number 
And I remember I, I took my business card uh, from, you know, from it, it's you know, stamped from where I work. And I took my business card. And I, told, I was like, I want you to remember me. I want you to remember my name. And I took my business card. It has the office number to where I work and it has my my um, my work phone. <clears throat> I took that shit. And at the bottom, I wrote my personal phone number and I put, you know, what my family calls me. I put that on the card as well. It says Chuck Young, but I put Mike above my number and I circled that part because I, I, t- I told her I wanted her to remember who I was, who I really was. I gave her the card and I let her go on about her way. And, you know, when I came back into the store, you know, all the fellas are asking me, you know, what, what you do, what you do, you know what I'm saying, what you do. I just, you know, I gave her my number, man. I hope she hit me up. You know what I'm saying? Nothing major. It's cool. But really, in my mind, I'm like, bruh, please let this girl hit me up. You know what I'm saying? Even, even, I even had those feelings at that point, like, please let this girl hit me up. You know what I'm saying? I told you, I knew that I felt like I was going to take this shit seriously. You know what I'm saying? I knew it right then. And she did hit me up that first evening. That next evening, I'm driving home from work. Like I said, me and my homie lived in my mail at the time. I'm driving home from work. It's probably about 8, 20, 8, 30. The phone rings. I got the phone connected to my uh, auxiliary power in my truck. So, you know what I'm saying? I just slid the answer. And it's her. And we talking. You know, we talking for a little while. You know what I'm saying? She's talking about, you know what I'm saying, what her day was like and stuff like that. And then she tells me, just like I told y'all just a moment ago, you know, she had contemplated not talking to me at all. Once again, she has been spurned. Her feelings have been hurt. She has been heartbroken time and time and time again. And and it's crazy because like if I can tell you like this is the most this is one of the most caring people, one of the most giving people, you know what I'm saying, that I've ever come in contact with in my life. You know what I'm saying? On a level of caring and giving for me and loving me and caring about me, like this person was on a level with my closest family members, you know what I'm saying, in a short span of like three months, you know what I'm saying, crazy, <laughs> absolutely crazy, like, we, we, like, it was the start of something special, you know, but, um, she was telling me that, and, you know, I'm like, yo, you know what I'm saying, give me a chance, you know what I'm saying, I, I, I will probably, you know what I'm saying, change your mind about, about how you feel, you know what I'm saying, I would, I'll probably be able to change your mind about that. Like, I think we can go places. And we talk. We talk for a long time. As, you know, most most <laughs> most situations like that, you that first conversation, if it's chemistry there and if it's, you know, if it's like that, the conversation is crazy long. I probably didn't get off the phone until about 3 or 4 in the morning. I went through a whole pack of cigarettes, sitting on the phone, walking outside, Walking around the apartment complex, getting in my car, getting back out of my car, you know what I'm saying, going to the bathroom, standing, looking in the mirror, talking on the phone, all kind of shit like that. Like this was this was that that deal. Um when I you know what I'm saying, I use this uh <laughs> this bit emoji on Snapchat all the time that says swooning. You know what I'm saying, swoon. You know what I'm saying? And my bit emoji got his head back with his hand over the forehead, like, man. Like I was, I was fucking swooning, like 100%. I was swooning. Um, now, what I didn't tell y'all is that prior to me seeing this young lady outside of my place of business, I had just recently reconnected with this other girl that I had talked to back in 2012, and we really liked each other. I kind of tried to compare the two situations. In the back of my mind, once again, I knew that the two situations were not comparable at all. But I tried to give it that because me and this other girl from 2012 had tried and we liked each other and we didn't work out. 